Good morning, everyone. It's really cold today. The sun's shining, but it's really cold. And so I made a fire today. It's quite cold in the house as well. So, uh, but when I went outside this morning to go and get some wood, I realized, oh my gosh, it's really cold out here. <laughs> and walking back into the house, I noticed that quite a bit of a, of a, of a uh, temperature difference. It was much warmer in the house, but before I went outside, oh, it's cold in the house, right? Yeah. Well, it is cold, and no, the door's not open today. Um, it's going to warm up again in a day or two, so that will be great. But, yes, I did make a fire today. Um just before the barn's already done already took care of all that Sissy went to church and uh it was fun this morning she they have some kind of a meeting afterwards with the elders and and she made a little dip uh, with uh, refried beans and guacamole and and uh a, and uh tomatoes and onions and and uh, what else did she put on there uh, some cheese little sour cream, some olives, yeah, yeah, okay, and she layered it, and uh, it was so fun to watch, and just, I got back from her, she says, hey, I need you over here, and I'm going, okay, okay, this is what you need me for, and she says, I need you to taste this, and I need you to taste that, <laughs> that's so cool, and then I watched her finishing it up, and uh, what do you think I should put up here, I said, oh, did a little decoration or something, so she ended up making this beautiful star with the uh, and dollops of sour cream with uh, with tomatoes and yeah the beautiful star and yeah okay and uh, it just looked gorgeous you know so that was our morning so far and uh, I have to watch the fire so I thought I'd just do this right now and I heard a guy talking this morning on how People says, oh, yeah, I worked hard for that, you know, and I work hard at my job, this and that. And he goes into this, but you should be working joyful and this and that. And, and there was this video going with it where people were growing stuff and picking this, you know, vegetables and all, garden stuff, you know. And I'm listening. I'm going, oh, yeah, you know, that's kind of true. You know, we're saying we're working hard, you know, and, and where's the joy in that or whatever. And, yeah, okay, and I'm listening, and then. I keep listening and going, hey, wait a minute, wait a second, what am I being pulled into here right now? Well, of course, and when you work hard, guess what? What's the harvest? Ah, that's very joyful. That's very, uh, watching things grow after you worked hard, for example, if you are a gardener or anything out there. But the one thing, yeah, you're going to work hard, right? Yes. Again, I thought, well, why would this guy make this into something negative now? And what? One can say, yeah, I worked hard for that. Which means what? You worked diligently for that. Yeah? You worked uh, resolutely for it. You worked uh, with, with uh, patience for it. Yeah? With passion. With, okay, all kinds of wonderful words that go with, I worked hard for that. It didn't come easy. How about that? And then I thought, okay, wait a minute, who's telling me this? So it's some kind of a guru, right? I'm going, I wonder if he ever worked hard in his life. That he comes up with something like this. As I say, really when it comes down to it, it wasn't a bad message. But I felt that it was not quite the truth. Right? Yes? Yeah, all right. Do I have to, make, have to rethink and deeper think everything? It's not just that. It's... How can we understand certain ways on how we express ourselves properly and not it becoming a misunderstanding? So if people, if millions of people listen to this guru, this guy, and so what? Suddenly if someone tells them, say, I worked hard for that. Oh, so you didn't have joy with it, huh? You should have joy working, not hard working at it. Uh, what? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? 
Just because I said worked hard for this. This, what we got here, we worked hard for all that. This did not come easy. It took commitment, responsibility, time, uh, sacrifices. Yes, to build this just gorgeous place for God and God's people. Yes, and of course, the joy was there because uh, we had all the, the end uh, was there uh, on how, what, how it was going to uh, help and be there for so many people. And uh, <laughs> so what? I can't say I worked hard for it. We worked hard for this. Can't say that. Or it's, got, it's misunderstood as... It, oh, this didn't bring us joy. We worked hard for all this. Oh, that did not bring us joy. Huh? Do you, you see what I'm saying? <clears throat> I. If one were, if if one, if this guru would want to apply this, in my opinion, humble opinion, in the right place, in the right way, it would be more. In order to accomplish something good, you do work hard for it. You just do. Yes? And, uh, but if you're working hard for something, that then you have to, in order to accomplish it, with other people especially, uh, together, if that means that you have to threaten them, force them, coerce them, Yes, degrade others, destroy other people's things because you're working hard towards something that you want to have, want done, want people to believe at that. Yeah, then I have to say, no, that's not the type of hard working that I want to be a part of. Yes, you understand what I'm saying? But you can work hard towards something that's really, really good. And with that, does not just come joy. It does not come easy. Yes? Okay. Yeah. People seem to rather than... Oh, and then I would say, that dude doesn't have any life experience with working hard. <laughs> he thinks hard of stuff to say. And it's... it's uh, I've, heard, I've heard him before, and some of it is really good, but this one, the way he presented it, I didn't like. Did not, did not, do not agree with, let's say it this way, right? Yes? Yeah. Because it opens up avenues, again, for people to abuse that on other people who do work hard for what they have, what they would like to see in the future for the greater good of the world, this, that, all that, right? Yes? So another guy making uh, plastic, um, it's uh, water. Uh, vegetables, vegetable glycerin, vinegar, and cornstarch. And he made his own plastic. Yeah, uh, people stop doing it or making it because it's not uh, waterproof. Okay, all right. So now we're talking certain things that you use plastic for that then has to be waterproof. But for, for, sim for other things... Right? That, that could be replaced, for example, uh, covering your food in the fridge, which why, can't, why don't you just take a plate? Or as I said, I have these little fabric uh, circles with an elastic in it I drape over and then uh, wash them, right? If, if that's needed. Sometimes I just rinse them out because there's no, no more need than that for it. And, um, and sometimes I'm going, okay, this one needs to be washed now. Right? Just, just throw it in with my clothes or something, right? It's all done at the same time. And there's less waste out there. Yes? Yeah, I make my own laundry detergent, which is very biodegradable, very mild on the environment. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so, uh, I love that. And it could be used for all kinds of other different things. He uses it for his plants, so for to keep the weeds down. 
And the thing is, it just disintegrates. It's not something that when you're done with the growing the plants a certain day or done in the, uh, when the winter time comes, you pull the plastic off, throw it in the garbage because you're going to use new more, right, or something. And the next year, yeah, this just disintegrates yeah, within a season. Whereas what? Regular plastic takes, what, 40 years to, okay, I've seen plastic disintegrate faster than that. But it still goes as plastic particles into the ground, right? Yes? Is that a good thing? Hmm? Well, anyway. Loved watching that. So, Well, let's go in here. Me and I. Then I watched a whole lot of... As soon as I got into it, watched people cooking different things. And uh, a guy was making... Uh, oh, there's a couple of them where uh, a, a stick hedge... Uh, then this guy was also made this arbor, and I was like, oh, it was just beautiful to watch. And it's all stuff that is already laying on the ground. Now, the one guy that say, oh, he's probably cut some saplings. But sometimes in the woods, you've got to thin that out as well, right? Yes? So that, no, no big deal if you've got plenty of it. And... Uh, and it was, it was just, it's, it's all organic. It's all, okay, you see? But you work a lot harder for that yourself than if you just go and get finished fencing or uh, or plastic or a roll of plastic. Yeah. With for that, you just go to the store, hand somebody some money you probably worked hard for. Um, you get my drift here. Yeah. Mm. To work together with nature, to have things that look, in my opinion, beautiful, right? Handmade, beautiful, right? very, have this artistic flair, art flair in it, right? Yes, takes a lot longer, takes a lot of work, and it's hard work. But the end product is beautiful, looks beautiful, right? What a joy, yes? Do I have to be joyful throughout the whole process? <laughs> well, you are, in a way, within your heart, right? Yes? Yeah. That doesn't mean when you cut yourself on a stick or this or that, you're not going to go, ouch. <laughs> <coughs> Working on my cough. It's this temperature change that messes a little bit with my bronchioles this time of year. Okay, oh, those are the wrong glasses. Yeah, I have several. I just thought of a way to have, have all my glasses hung in a way. I'm thinking on how to do that. Come up with some, <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I have glasses laying everywhere. Okay, all right, let's get going. We are in one, the first book of Chronicles, Five. Oh, ooh, Bo's limping. He's going to go and lay in the sun. His chair's not in the sun yet. Oops. It's cold, but it's sunny. Dogs enjoy laying in the sun. I guess they know what vitamin D is as well, huh? Yes? <laughs> <coughs> <clears throat> All right. In five, first book of Chronicles, the Transjordian tribes. Reuben, sons of Reuben, firstborn of Israel. He was indeed the firstborn, but when he defiled his father's bed, his birthright, he defiled his father's bed. What did he do again? He did something with one of his wives. Not of him. His birthright was given to the sons of Joseph, sons of son of Israel, and he was no longer reckoned as the eldest son. Oh, really? It's interesting to me on how that seems to be important. Oh, what just happened? Seems to be important to one person, this this uh, 
uh, defiling his father's bed. It seems to be important with one person, and that is, oh, that's why that was taken away from them, or this or that, the consequences of it. But in other cases, that doesn't seem to be important, right? What did we read first in the Chronicles on how, yeah, all that, you know, kind of adultery and infidelity is, it's not really what we're talking about, but they keep bringing it up anyway. You see? Hmm. I find that a bit biased. Okay, well, just... I'm not getting why that would take, but okay, it doesn't matter because we already read about all that. Although Judah grew greater than his brothers and a leader came from him, the birthright was Joseph's. <laughs> Maverick and Jake. <laughs> Beautiful to see when a horse starts to run, tail up, just whoa, head up. It's a beautiful sight. <laughs> okay. Okay. Alto Chuda grew greater than his brothers, and a leader came from him. The birthright was Joseph's. Okay. Sons of Reuben, firstborn of Israel, Hanak, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. Joel. Joel, Joel, sons of Joel, Shemaiah, his son, Gog, his son, Shimei, his son, Micah, his son, Reiah, his son, Baal, Baal, his son. Joel actually, or uh, Reniah, named his son Baal? It's spelled Baal, like Baal, the god that, oh, interesting, what's going on here? Huh. Let me see if I set that up. Yeah, I, yeah, I've had a lot of spirit activity going on here in the house, um, certain other things, and yeah, it looks like it's not we're not it's not over yet. Which okay, uh, is that good or bad? That just depends on where you're at in your spiritual life and what you do with the gifts and talents that you have. So, yeah, there's definitely something going on, but okay, I can't. Guys, I'm doing this, then I'm going to the kitchen, and I'm going to cook something. I'm going to do some cleaning up. Then I've got to, uh, I want to plant some things in the house. And so, I got it, but you guys just can all be a part of this right now when the time is right. Okay, that's how I talk to them. And, uh, yeah, I... My house is, what did I say? <laughs> Our house is pretty open. Sometimes I have to put a break on, but it, that's very seldom now. All right, all right, all right, back here. Uh, Bera, his son, whom Tiglot, Pileser, king of Assyria, carried off into exile, was the chief of the Reubenites. His brothers by families were grouped according to relationship. Jael was first, then Zechariah and Bela, son of Azaz, son, son of Shema, son of Joel. Territory of Reuben. It was Reuben who lived in Aroer, and his territory extended as far as Nebo and Balmian. The eastward, what he occupied, extended to the edge of the desert and the river Euphrates, for they had many herds in Gilead. In the time of Saul, they made war on the Hagrites, whom they defeated and whom were then living in their tents throughout the eastern front of Gilead. Why is it people have to... Can't they just, hey, uh, you know... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? People sure work hard on making war, don't they? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Gain territory, do this, do that. That's a hard job right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very joyful. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Ugh, whatever. Gad. Next to them in Bashan, as far as 
Salaka, lived the sons of Gad. Joel was the first, Shafam the second, was the first. Oh. Oh, Joel was the first. Wait a minute. Which one now? This one or the one that's further mentioned down territory of Reuben? Son of Shema, son of Joel. Sons of Joel. Then it, it ends with son of Joel. Ugh, man. So here's Joel again. All right, all right, all right. Joel was the first, Shaphan the second, then Janai and Shaphat in Bashan. Their brothers by families were Michael, Meshulam, Sheba, Yorai, Yakan, Sia, Ab, Eber, seven. These were the sons of Abihail, Ben Hurry, Ben Yor. Yor mm, okay, seven. These were the sons of Abihail, Ben Hurry, Ben. Yaroa, Ben Gilead, Ben Michael, Ben Yerishai, Ben Yado, Yado, huh. Ben Buzz, Ben Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> so sounds like these were like princes in the uh huh, huh? interesting. All right, well, that's what they told us before. Mm -hmm. Ahi, son of Abdiel, son of Guni, was the head of their families. They were not been something, rather. They inhabited Gilead, Bashan, and its dependencies, as well as all the pasture lands of Sharon on their extremities. In the time of Yatam, king of Judah, and in the time of Jeroboam, king of Israel, all of them were included in the official genealogy. Hmm. Okay. Um. The sons of Reuben, the Gadads, and the half-tribe of Manasseh had warriors, men armed with shield and sword, who could handle the bow and were trained for war. To the number of 44,760 fit for service. Wow! How precise. I remember. Yeah, that's all from... We're rereading some things here. They made war on the Hagrides, on Chetur, Naf, Naf, Nafish... And Nodab. God came to their help, and the Hagrites and all their allies fell into their hands, for they called on God as they fought. And because they put their trust in him, he heard their prayer. Of their livestock, they carried off 50,000 camels, 250,000 sheep, 2,000 donkeys, and 100,000 people. Okay, wait a minute. So, when... God gave the Ten Commandments to the Israelites. Does that mean that only they, that they would have to abide to it, right? But what are they doing here right now? Oh, but there was war. I don't care if there was war. It says, thou shalt not kill. And it says, thou shalt not steal. I'm just saying. So, oh, so were, were these only meant for the Israelites, Right? Amongst themselves. But when it came to outside people who looked just like them too, they had, there were mother, fathers and mothers and grandparents and children, babies, girls and boys, and they had them all the same way. They, I mean, they were families. Surely there was love going through there too, right? Yeah, okay, just saying. So did God just make the Ten Commandments for the Israelites? Does that still stand today? Does that mean that nobody else is under the Ten Commandments except for the Israelites? So what did they do here? I'm sorry, that just came to my mind. What's going on here? So if you're God's people, it's okay to do whatever you want with people who are not God's people or one doesn't consider God's people? Really? Oh. That's what I find the Israelites just did here. Hey, and they, again, where did they put God in here? Oh, interesting. God supported that? Okay. <laughs> Here is a little bit of that one. 
Because the war was of God, the slaughter was great. They continued to live in their territory until the exile. I just, I didn't even see that beforehand. Did I make my point here? Really? It was God's war. So it was great. The slaughter was great. <laughs> oh, wow. There is joy to be had. Why would anyone, even if there is a necessity to fight a people back because they're so cruel that they're, or people needed to be saved from the hands of, okay, I got it. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like in World War II, like the Korean War. Okay, just saying. Slaughter then, because, oh, well, we're on the side of goodness. We're on the good side, right? We're the good ones. We're the good guys. Slaughter becomes what? Joyful? A joyable thing? That's great. Really? Wow. Hey, it's in here. That's how the Israelites felt here. Just saying. Huh? Does nobody address this? What the heck? Okay. Nobody wants to address it, but it was God's war. It was great. Slaughter was great. Oh, sorry, Father. He knows. The half-tribe of Manasseh. The sons of the half-tribe of Manasseh lived in the territory between Bashan and Baal Hermon, Sanir and Mount Hermon. They were numerous. These were the heads of their families. Efer, oh, Ishi. Yeah, Ishi. You rebel, bandit. Probably killed a lot of people. All right. These were the heads of their families. Ephor, Ishi, Eliel, Azriel, Jeremiah. Oh, that's the half-tribe of Manasseh. So Ishi is from the half-tribe of Manasseh. Ooh. Odavaya, Jadiel, Stout fighting men, men of renown, heads of their families. But since they were unfaithful to the God of their ancestors and prostituted themselves to the gods of the peoples of the country whom God had destroyed before them, the God of Israel roused the hostility of Pul, king of Assyria. That is the wrath of Tiglat, Pileser, king of Assyria, who deported them. The Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh taking them off to Hala, Habor, Hara, and the river of Gozan. They are still there today. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, a Levi, the lineage of the high priests. Sons of Levi. Gershon, Kohat, and Merari, sons of Kohat, Amram, Ezar, Hebron, Uziel, children of Amram. I wonder if that Uziel is the one that David had killed for his wife. Where was it? Uziel, Uziel. I can't remember. Children of Amram. Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. Oh, sons of Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu. Oh, the lineage of the high priests. All right, all right, all right. Eleazar and Ithamar. So that couldn't be them. Eleazar fathered Phinehas. Phinehas fathered Abishua. Abishua fathered Buki. Buki fathered Uzi. Uzi. Uzi fathered Sarah. Sarahiah, Sarahiah fathered Mary, Mariah, Mariah fathered Amariah, Amariah fathered Ahitub, Ahitub fathered Sadak, 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 Sadak fathered Ahimat, Ahimaat, Ahimahat, Ahimahat fathered Az, Azariah, Azariah fathered Yohanan, Yohanan fathered Azariah. <laughs> That's cute. Oh. He, it was who officiated as priest in the temple which Solomon built in Jerusalem. 
Atzariah fathered Amariah, Amariah fathered Ahitub, Ahitub fathered Sadak, Sadak fathered Shalom, Shalom fathered Hilkiah, Hilkiah fathered Atzariah, Atzariah fathered Sariah, Sariah fathered Yehotzadak, and Yehotzadak went into exile when at the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, Yahweh exiled Judah and Jerusalem. Okay, I'm hearing the fire go down. I gotta go and put another, and we'll finish this up. My fire, my fire won't go out. Woo! It's not out, it just needs a little food. Well, there it is. Uh, more lineage stuff. It it seems like, I guess we'll find out more about it on where this is all going. But going back to the birthright of Reuben that was given to Joseph, again, of course, in a way, uh, as I've said before, what's the purpose of all this lineage stuff, right? And uh, Joseph, of course, is not Reuben, is the one where the lineage kind of keeps on going towards what? The birth of Christ. Yes? Yeah. Anyway, well, I guess we'll find it would be interesting to kind of, yeah, weave our way through it. So far, the only thing I've been interested in is when my son's name comes up every time, right? Yes? And, uh, uh, yeah, I'd rather he be, uh, one of the holy ones, <laughs> pleasing to God. But Ishi in the Bible doesn't sound like was, that was pleasing to God, right? Yes? Uh, so... Restoration needed. It's good. It's good too. I think about all these men. And if one could have Yeah, individually a conversation with them what would they have considered something they worked hard for that was pleasing to God right truly pleasing to God huh? as a collective they weren't so pleasing to God I don't think on top of that uh, in order to I don't know. Why do people need some kind of a false elevation of their self? False exaltment and this and that. Right? Why not just say, hey, we made some bad mistakes here. So we shouldn't pull God into it to make them look better. Right? Yeah. Sin isn't supposed to be excused. It's supposed to be restored. Right? Yes? Yeah. All right. That's all I have to share today. I got to get going. Uh, I saw this for, I think, maybe I've already shared this once before, but I'll do it again. I have to cook it really mild because my sister-in-law has some problems with her stomach. So, so, uh, uh, so she can't eat it. She, she likes it, but it, she pays for it <laughs> if she eats it anyway. So I'm trying to remember, I can always add a little extra spice, spiciness, into my food on my plate. 
right? Yes. And, uh, but I'm going to try this again. I think I'm going to make a saffron rice this time. And uh, uh, I just saw a way to uh, saute the, the chicken legs that I have. And then I'm going to put, I'm going to put some uh, bok choy in it. I have some carrots I need to use. And what else is there? I'll see what else there is. And uh, I thought about throwing some apples and pineapple in there too. And people are, hey, what? Actually, that's like sweet and sour. It's, it's actually really good. And, uh, and then um, the rice, right? Saute the rice, some onions, garlic. Okay, now I'm going to leave out the, the, the fruit. And, uh, and then uh, uh, I fill it with water and I put the chicken legs in there as well. And then everything cooks together. Oh, it's delicious. It's so easy and it's, it's fun to do with the kids too, with kids. Because that's kind of a one, it's like a, a one pot kind of thing, right? And uh, if the children see exactly what goes in it, this snap, right? And then the chicken kind of just sits there, the chicken legs it just sit there and they're all cooked nicely as well. It's a really fun dish. It, I would say even in the way one can cook that in a big pan, right? Ooh, that's what I'm going to do when I'm going to go up there. Gonna, oh, I'm going to write that down. And you cook that in a big pan and then put the big pan at, uh, on, the, on the table and everyone just kind of eats out of it together. Oh, I just saw that on one of the videos again. I just love that. You take a piece of bread or whatever and you get some of the... All right, all right, all right. It's not everybody's thing. I don't know how clean you are. Yeah. But you got clean hands, this snap. What's wrong with that? And children, can you not just see how, how they would love that? To do that? Mm. Well, I'm going to work hard for that because I'm already excited about it, right? Yes? <laughs> I can't hear you kicking it. Uh, <laughs> probably just as a joke this year I'm going to say oh I worked hard for that just because right yes I disagree with uh, with this guru's idea of what what did you just say first it sounded good and going wait 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 a minute something's not ringing right here coming from someone who what sits on his behind most of his life all right I'm just saying don't tell me I'm not working hard. I can't say I'm working hard for this or that. That that somehow signals I have no joy in my life for this or that. Or that don't regard hard work as, as, uh, as uh, something that I should be able to express myself. Yeah, I worked hard for that. And be proud of it. Do you know what I mean? Yes? Okay. All right. Well, anyway. So... <laughs> Well, if you dish it out, <laughs> you got to also accept the dish back when you're being served, right? Yes. Okay. Learning from each other. Otherwise, the guy really has some good things to say as well. So it's not like, okay. But that one kind of hit me a little and went, huh, wait a minute. <laughs> who's, who's saying that? How is he saying this? No. All right. That's all I have to share this morning. Yes, yes. Time to go and do a little cleaning and cooking. Mm, yes. Mm, now I'm all excited about cooking. Ooh, ah, I just, oh, hmm. Ah, Spirit sends us good ways to just, ah, give out there. Yes, so many different ways. Become more united with each other. Show oneness, eating out of one pot, the whole family together. Isn't that unity as well okay all right god's love and blessings always may he protect you and i will talk to you all another time